Hey everybody, welcome back. So I thought before I went any further in my attempts to build an enclosure for my Ender 3 that I'm going to put the the um, Big Tree Tech SKR board in, I thought I'd stop and show you guys the partial progress in case it's something you're thinking about doing yourself. Now I'm kind of departing from this because I am mounting mine as you see on this old Craftsman rollaway and the IKEA table, the IKEA LAC table, which is the basis for this enclosure, the legs are too big to fit on it. So I had to do something to get it to fit on top of there. And I looked through Thingiverse at all the different, different designs. And unfortunately, the IKEA LAC table legs are not long enough, so you have to extend the table legs. And the way most of them are doing it is they're putting an extension at the top and they're putting another one at the bottom. That gives them some place to mount the plexiglass or glass or whatever you're going to put on it to completely enclose it. So let me get the printer out of it. I just wanted it there because I've kind of got it there to get it out of the way too while I'm working on this. And I've got a new camera I'm using too. I bought a Canon Vixia HFR 800 used one, hopes that I would be able to get some actual in-focus videos. <laughs> So let me get the, the printer out of there and let me show you what I've done so far. Now, one thing I liked about the design that I chose from Thingiverse, and I'll put a link below for it. I've kind of departed from it a bit, but his extensions don't require that you mount the, mount the sides permanently. Also, here's a thing I really liked about it you can lift the top off. Because I got to thinking, how am I going to get in there to work on it if it's all mounted solid? And I thought, I'll have to pull the sides off, and that would suck. So if you look at the bottom of this, you'll see that there's holes in the bottom of these legs. Don't know if you can see that or not. Let me flip the screen of the camera around so I can see what you're seeing. There we go. You'll see there's holes in the bottom of these legs. I printed, and for full disclosure, I printed all these legs on my Alpha YZ20 because I just couldn't get to either of the Ender 3s because I had so much stuff piled up in here. Now, when you do this, you'll see that some of these are screwed on the sides. I don't know if you can see the screws going into the sides. So, in order to make this thing solid, I highly recommend you screw it, you glue it with something like that, like Gorilla Wood glue or Elmer's wood glue or some other wood glue and then screw it. Otherwise, the, the extensions here have, have a screw that goes in here down in the center and then it has the screws on the sides. If you can see them, I know I'm not getting this up very well, screw here and a screw there where my other thumb is, but where it goes down onto the here, the leg does not screw into this. The base, let me try and get it on camera, there we go. The base screws into the table, but the leg does not screw down into the base. There's only these screws on either side. Now this thing is hard, awkward to get on there, but so I highly recommend that you glue everything and then screw it, and then you'll get a solid, a, a solid part. Now, if you're going to use the other table, just pretend that this is the other IKEA table. These parts these parts here, they screw into this and or into the top of the other tabletop. Now the neat thing about this is that lets you set it down on and at the same time have it being pretty nice and solid. It can't move around very much, but yet you can lift it off. Now being able to lift it off kind of wrecked my entire plan of mounting the power supply and the control box to this side. So that was one reason why I'm going to get rid of this again. Oh, and one thing, when you're, um, when you're, um, when the glue is drying on this, put it on here so that it all dries solid and fix so that you don't find out later that when the glue is dried, that you're a quarter inch off of matching here. So when the glue is drying, put it together and that way everything will harden up in the right positions. So, I made this and I put legs on it because 
I wanted to mount it on top of here. I want it sitting on here. I don't want to mount it there. I'm just going to sit it there. I'll probably make some print some out of the out of the flexible filament. I'll probably print some rubber bottoms for it, some you know cushy bottoms for it. So now my plan is to mount the control box and the power supply under here. And um, I went looking for control boxes on Thingiverse. And they're either huge and complex, way more than I want, or they have no mounting tabs. And I found a bunch of them. I'm not going to um, bore you with all my trials and tribulations, but here's an example of what I went through trying to print control boxes from Thingiverse. So what I finally did was I found a design I liked. And um, I tried to modify it and didn't have much luck with that. I did well with the lid. I got the lid modified and I'll put a link to this one below and I'll probably put my my um, remixed one up there too. But I found one I liked but the only problem with the lid was the tabs were so thin. Can you see it? The tabs here were so thin they broke very easily. I can't get it on the camera very well. I'm not used to this. These tabs here here, 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 and here, which clip into these slots, they break off, broke off real easy. So I loaded it in the mesh mixer and I made those tabs much thicker and solid and that fixed that part. The bottom part, the designer had originally designed these to be punch outs and he was using a special functionality in Simplify 3D which Cura doesn't have. And oh by the way, Cura 4.2.1 Despite my dislike of it changing a lot of my pre-made profile settings, it really prints great. So I tried modifying his and I printed some of those ones you saw and I couldn't get it right to save my life. So I went into Fusion 3D, which is probably what I should have done to begin with, and I built a copy of his from the ground up in Fusion. I got four nice big mounting tabs. I got rid of his punch outs and just used support for the holes. I kind of moved everything around a little bit. So um, the board goes in like this. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I dropped the board and tripped and the whole thing turned into a disaster. So anyway, just typical Chuck stuff. Anyway, I'm back and I have the board mounted in the bottom of the the box and um, you see my screws are slightly too long but that's okay because I was going to space the bottom of the box away from the bottom of the mount to give this these um, slots some room to get some airspace and not to block them off so when you also when you put this together and you put your screws through and you put your nuts on the bottom the hexagonal holes for the nuts are a little too small so just set the nut in the proper orientation and then put your soldering iron right down in the middle of the hole and push down and you'll sink the nut right into the plastic and with any luck when you go ahead and put your screws in they'll line up with the um, nuts I was at 50-50 which is about typical for me I had to rock the nuts around a little bit to get them on but no big deal in the long run now one of the reasons why I like this design so you'll see the um, everything lines up pretty good it's not a hundred percent perfect but you know what it's good enough to work and that's what we're after here one of the reasons I like this design so much was because of the lid and this channel I'm still trying to get used to how to move stuff so that you see it in this camera this it mounts a 50 50 blower fan in here and the fan outputs right into this channel and blows down this channel and out the end of the box and this channel fits right over the um, stepper driver heat sinks. Let me put it together for you so you can maybe see what's going on. And let me back up a little bit and let me get it in right. That's backwards. And you also you may notice I had the clearance. This I had to cut. Oops, there we go again. I had to cut the top of this down by about, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch, you know, maybe maybe six millimeters five millimeters and I had to take a small chunk out of here 
because it was um, hitting the edge of the board. They both were hitting the edge of the board. So before I upload it to Thingiverse, I'm going to have to go back in the mesh mixer and trim that down a little bit. But let me go ahead and put it together. And you can see what it looks like together. Let me get the wires in the box. There we go. It's a 24 volt 50 by 50 by, I think it's 15 blower fan. And you can see the blower fan mounted there. And um, you can see on this end, I ain't got the wires sticking out this hole now. Can't win. Anyway, you can see on this end, if you look in there, you can see the heat sink. And that's the channel that the blower motor blows down and out through this hole. I can't. Everything I do is backwards on this. It's like backing a trailer up for your first time. Anyway, this is going to mount on the bottom of, on the bottom of my um, little plywood thing with the feet I made. This here going to mount underneath there in the back. And the power supply is going to mount under there as well. And I'm going to get it all together. And I'll come back and I'll tell you how everything is fitting and everything is working. And um, hopefully, if you're doing this, it might have saved you a little bit of difficulty. I hope so. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and notifications. And I have some links below if you'd use them when you need something at, at um, GearBest or Amazon. That would be great. Thanks a bunch, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye for now.